Hello again, it's Cheryl here at the Made on Sunday studio. We talk all about branding, design, and creative entrepreneurship on this channel. So if those are topics of interest to you, then remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get more video updates from me. <laughs> all right, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to design different types of form fields and tables and check boxes, basically different types of interactive things that you can add onto your workbook or um, worksheet or invoice on to your Canva designs. Um, previously, I created a video on how to make those PDFs that you have exported from Canva to make them interactive and a lot of you really really enjoyed that video so thank you so much. Um, as a follow-up to that video, I thought it would be fun to kind of showcase different ways on how to make that actual design in the first place and maybe I'll even include a free template at the end. So. If you're interested in making interactive fields on your PDF document within Canva, then keep watching. All right, so welcome to my Canva account. I have created this little one pager here with all the different types of form fields that um, I recommend designing or playing with um, in your designs uh, that I'm gonna show you exactly how to create um, each one of them in this video right now. Um, I'll also be uh, providing this template um, at the end of this video. So um, do watch till the end of this video to get a link to that template. All right, so why don't we just create a new page right now? And let's first create this type of uh, text box. So I'm going to add some text here. Let's just say I'm gonna use this um text right here and then i'm going to do this is question number one and let's just make sure that this is aligned to the left so we have your question here and then now we want to create a little box for them to uh fill out so i'm just going to put my head right here um all right let's go to elements and uh, into these are recently things that I've used but you can just go to lines and shapes right here and this is where you can find a square and this square is totally adjustable so you can just make it longer or shorter or bigger let's just say we want like a one-liner right here we add it right under this question right here but you definitely don't want like a, a text box that's such a dark color so we're just gonna make it like a light uh, maybe white color and then I'm gonna make it slightly transparent. So then it looks like It's just uh, a part of this this Green color that I created as the background. All right, so love that. So that's kind of um, how you create this little box right here and um, You can always just like copy this section click on option and then drag the section out to create like question number two. You can change this to question number two. And that's how you can create uh, like the same question boxes or duplicates of things quickly. But let's say you wanna just make this a short answer, then you can do that as well. Maybe there's two short answers right here. Um, and then maybe like a longer answer. So I'm gonna put like one of these right here um, and then make this like an, a longer answer right there right but uh, in addition to this little design here you can also uh, instead of having like a filled in box here you can also do like a line a lined box so you can um, click on that one right there which is just an outline of a box um, the smaller you make this the smaller the outline of the box will be and then you can just pull this out to make it to the actual size. So that's a, that's how you make the line thinner. You can't actually change the line thinness here, unfortunately, uh, but I have to do that is just to uh, adjust the box through the diagonal and then make it bigger there. So even if you make this this big, um, the line thickness will still stay the same. 
So that way you can make an outline box uh, instead. So again, I would probably make this like maybe a dark green color, then it kind of matches. Um, I actually want to make this even thinner. So I'm just going to do this. There we go. So that looks really good. So there's that one covered for you. Now, maybe instead of boxes, maybe you can um, create lines instead for questions. So I'm just going to copy these over. And then instead of these boxes, we can create lines. So in the same area right here, you can see there are lines and there's all these different types of designs here on Canva, which is awesome. Um, I'm gonna like give it a little bit more space right here and make this line longer. Now you can keep it like this or you can make the line thickness a little bit thinner. So usually I would do like a one um, and then maybe I would duplicate this, maybe give it a multi-line kind of thing. Or I'm just gonna copy these ones over here and do another copy of this. Um, they also have dotted lines. So you can either do like a longer dotted line or a shorter dotted line, maybe make this a little bit thicker so you can actually see the dots. There we go. I'm just gonna copy this over. And then now we have dotted lines as another option to design your fields. All right, what's next? So we now have, how about this one right here? So this one is very similar to how we designed this one, but instead of having the question outside of the box, you might wanna actually put it inside of the box as well. So something like this, um, that's another option of how you might want to style this. Usually the font will be smaller when it's inside a box. So if you wanna, like, maybe expand it like this and just put your question right inside the box. That's another way to style this type of question. All right, next up is check boxes. So how we create this is we have your question right here, right? Um, and then you might have different answer options. So for example, you might want to um, add one of these there and your question check boxes are usually like a square so you're gonna have that right there and i'm just gonna copy this over and make these your answers so maybe your option one option two so maybe four options three and four Perfect, um, and you might want to align them better. So I'm just going to go to position right here and space them out vertically. So that makes sure the spacing between each one is the same. Now you will want to duplicate. Actually, I'm just going to change the color of this first. Let's do that white color, but a little bit opaque. Um, oops, I'm just going to duplicate that one so that there are four in total. And then you might want to do the same thing. Just cop, uh, copy over all of them and then just make sure that they're spaced out evenly. Um, and then we have your check boxes. So we want to make sure that these um, will be able to be checked. I mean, all of these fields right now are not interactive on um, on Canva itself, but I will show, show you later on how to make these all interactive. So one other thing I wanted to show you, which I'm actually going to uh, replace. I'm going to make this smaller so that I can move this up. In addition to checkboxes, you can also do a drop down. So I'm um, just going to do a little question here and I'm going to be uh, leaving this uh, space right here. Um, to allow for the drop down, but to make sure to add instructions here, right? So maybe the second line, or maybe I'm just going to create a different line here that's smaller that says, like, click on the drop down to drop down to pick your option. So just 
provide some like instruction there. And then later on, when we make this interactive, we're gonna make sure that there is um, space there for them to fill out this drop down, to put this drop down section right here. All right, perfect. And then last but not least, we have this grid function. So I'm super excited about this one because this is totally new on Canva, which is a great addition. So if you go back to your elements, right? Um, I'm gonna go back here. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you're gonna see this section called tables. So there's actually a few couple of options here. now. These are just different color options of the first view. So the first line is all the black and gray version. So just start with that and then just change the color yourself maybe, I think will be best. Um, so let's say you wanna make some sort of grid um, where whoever you're sending this document to can fill out themselves. Like let's say you're a coach and you want them to do like a Monday to Friday thing. Um, so you can do that. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Move this over and um, we can add some columns. So as you can see here, there's this button right here and here. This will add rows, um, which I actually want to delete a row. Whoops. Let's do that again. Um, delete row and then this down a bit and I'm going to add a couple of rows. Add column after, add column after. Um, I'm going to spread this out a little bit. Okay, so if you click on this button, you can um, size the columns equally. So now it is all equally spaced out. We're going to change the color of um, all of these boxes right here. So I'm just gonna select all of them. I'm gonna change it to actually this kind of white color, just an off-white color, perfect. And then now you can actually go into each one and kind of like, um, like change the look of it and stuff. But I think that looks really good right there. So I'm just gonna add my content. So I'm just gonna copy one of these over and maybe call this Monday, Tuesday. Hey, it's editing Cheryl interrupting here. I just realized as I was filming this part of the video or editing this part of the video that you can actually type right into these grids. So you, instead of making like um, text boxes, you can actually just type right into it. The reason why I didn't see this is because the color of the text was white. So I can actually type right into it and then it would align the text properly. So don't be a fool like me and actually just type right into the grids. Genius. All right, that's it. <laughs> um, and then now these fields, we can keep it open for now. And this is where people would be able to type things. Obviously this grid is quite small right now. Like for the, purposes of showing this tutorial, I made it really small, but you can definitely make these grids like bigger if you needed to. Um, you can just go like this and you can make these like bigger grids. Actually, maybe I'll do that now. So why don't I delete one of the rows and then I'll make this longer. So now it's kind of like a calendar view. And I think this would be a really fun thing if you're creating your own um, journal or diary or bullet journal or something like that. This is a great option to make um, grids that are um, cohesive and then you don't have to like create them yourself um, row by row. So I'm just going to move everything up a bit because it's a little bit cramped down here, but that's pretty much all of the different ways that I recommend designing grids and form fields. Now, once you have all of this done, I'm just going to download this version right here and let's uh, save the second file as a PDF and I'm going to download that. 
All right, so now that you have your finished PDF document, you wanna to go to PDF Escape, and this is where you are going to be uploading your document to make all of those form fields that you just created actually digitally interactive. So once you get onto PDF Escape, it is free, so just go onto the free online version. Um, you can um, upload a PDF to PDF Escape. So I'm just gonna drag my PDF over to this section right here, and then it's going to process it. Okay, so now that your document has been uploaded, um, we need to create all of these interactive boxes. So we're gonna go into the left-hand side here. You see there's a couple of options right here. Um, you can go to form field, and that's where you would create your fields. So right now we just need text boxes. So from here, this is for like short text, like one or two word text. This is for like paragraphs. So if you have different like lines of text, then you wanna use a text box. So right now, because this is a smaller uh, line, like a one line text, I'm just gonna go to select and select this area. So now I have a one line of text right here. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, for all of my text boxes. You wanna make sure that they look as even as possible on each line. So right now that should be a little bit thicker. Um, you can, every time you do this, you can also change the font that will be used as well as the font size. Um, so make sure to keep that in mind if you want to adjust that. Um, and let's say right here, it's like paragraph, right? So you wanna make sure that you're going to field again and go to text paragraph. And this will allow like multi lines of information. So all of the text will fit within this box, even if they're typing like multiple lines. So make sure to use that option. Um, right here is where I want to put a drop down, right? So let's go in back to here and click on drop down, select, and this is where your drop down is going to show up. Um, and so your drop down probably has multiple answers that they can choose from. So let's go right click into this section and object properties. Um, you can name it if you want to, question two. Um, and then you want to type in all of your different uh, drop down options. So it's, as you can see here, it's one option per line. So I'm gonna add option one, option two, option three, and option four. Um, and then you can say whether this question is required or not, um, which this isn't a contract that you're signing. So I, I don't know if that's really needed. So once you have all of those options in different lines, you can click on OK. And now when they click on this drop down right here, they have different options to choose from. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? All right, so next section is um, check boxes. So again, you wanna go in here and go to check box, select, and this is where you're gonna add your checks, check box field. You want to make sure that it is really matching that box well and this is where you can uncheck the box so most likely you want to keep those unchecked in the beginning because um, you don't want to check for other people <laughs> so whatever you do here will be what shows up uh, on the document that they go into so here is where you can also do different um, uh, design so you can do circles and crosses and um, stars if you if you want um, so there you go so keep these unchecked for now and then make sure to save it that way all right next up is uh, these form fields so you want to make these like if it's supposed to be like a list like people can type multiple lines in this you want to make sure that you're clicking on form field and go to a text box uh, or sorry, text paragraph. Uh, and then again, that will allow people to type like multiple lines. And then in case you wanna check, you can just go like this. See, that's what a paragraph looks like. There we go. So all of our fields are now um, 
uh, fillable. So we're gonna download this file. Um, and there we go, super fast. Let's open up the document. I'm actually gonna open this up on the Finder um, instead and then open it up. This is what people will see when they open it up with whatever PDF reader that they're using. So what happens is this is your this is your text box. And if they go to the next line, um, they can't really do that. <laughs> they can, because this is a one line text. So that's what it looks like for one line text. Um, they can only put one line of text on each line. And then here they can choose their options. Um, here they can do their check boxes. Um, and then this is where the paragraph shows up, right? This is the first line and the second line. So make sure to, it's really important to pick text paragraph if you're allowing multi lines of text. Same as this side. So once they have uh, their PDF set up, a few of you asked what happens um, if they, like whether they're saving it or not. So if they click on like save, like command save, let's say, then this will be saved. Let me show you, see, it saves. If, however, they went like this, clicked on spacebar, if they just view it like this, they're not gonna be able to fill it out. They have to go into a PDF reader of some sort, fill it out and then save it and then their document will be saved. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you need to provide instructions to have whoever you're sending this to, make sure you tell them to open it up in an actual PDF reader and click on save in order to fill in and save the document on their own uh, document folder. All right, so that is some different ways you can design grids, form fields, check boxes, and drop boxes that are all interactive on Canva for free. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. I am actually gonna include that template that I created for this video as a freebie um, where you can download it and um, basically just use that document as a template to start designing your interactive fields. Um, I hope that's helpful. So I will include that link um, over on this video somewhere as well as in the description below. So you can download that completely for free. I'll open up right on your Canva account and then you can start using those fields from there on. All right, again, I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos just like this one. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I wanna thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me here today and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>